basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take this absolute junker of a canoe, I'm trying to fix it. I'm gonna cut the end off, which is completely normal. I'm just gonna chop the end off, make a new bulkhead, rig up some kind of way for my propeller to go into the water and some kind of way for that propeller to be out of the water. I'm gonna continue on the saga of a powered canoe because at the end of the day, fishing is fun, canoeing is fun, but you hit that long stretch of flat water and you just wish you had a motor. So this is gonna be a small form factor propelled canoe that'll take you through those boring stretches of, of mud flats or sand where there's not a small mouth to be found. And you can just burn on past that and get to the rocky parts where all the smallies are at. All right, so welcome back to Green Lizard USA. My name is William, if you haven't met me before. Uh, today I wanna to talk to you a little bit more about my crazy idea to put an inboard motor in a canoe. So this is actually the same Predator 212 or six and a half horse motor I got from Harbor Freight a couple of years ago and did the same thing in a really cheap uh, green single layer plastic canoe that wasn't great. So I wanted to do it again. So I had the same motor, same coupler, same shaft, same propeller as I had before, but this time I have a much better donor canoe uh, to work on. So we'll look over here for a second. And I lucked out like a bear. Uh, over the weekend, I've uh, really been enjoying using Facebook Marketplace and I found a Old Town 174 Penobscot. It's kind of a funny name, but it's a 174, which means it's 17 foot four inches long, which is a really stable platform for fishing, which is what I'm most interested in for this ultimate project. And it's not the camp we're being weird right now. Yes, this canoe is extremely broken. Uh, it almost looks as if the Hulk grabbed it from either end and just crushed it. Uh, both of the ends are smashed. The deck plates are kind of busted a bit. And the gunnels on the left and the gunnels on the right are both snapped. So in a future video, I'll show you how I'll attempt to repair it. What do you think? Is this repairable? I don't know. But anyway, I'm gonna take this canoe, which is 17 feet long, an absolute beauty for fishing. And I'm gonna do something pretty crazy. So I'm gonna get my saws off and I'm gonna first mark out a line and I'm gonna cut the back of this canoe off, which might sound crazy because retail this canoe would be about $1,400 or $1,500. But the really sweet thing is that, I was saying earlier, I lucked out like a bandit. I bought this canoe from a reseller who buys things from warehouses and sells them again online for $225. So I'm not gonna have any heartburn when I cut the end off a $1,500 canoe. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut the end off, I'm gonna make it into a square stern, which is like a flat back style canoe, which typically people would hang a trolling motor or a small outboard off of but I have some different plans. So let's come on back over to the workbench. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this motor, same thing I just described, and I'm gonna stick it in the back of that canoe. And through that square stern that I'll build, I'll basically take um, probably some three quarter or one inch thick starboard material, which if you haven't heard of that, it's like a it's like a high density polyethylene. I may be misquoting that, but it's a plastic, a thick plastic board. Uh, it's pretty similar to here's a random piece just from the shop. I have a lot of random stuff everywhere. Um, this is something that a friend of mine named Steve gave me. It is a piece of red plastic. It's actually from a bathroom partition that of course couldn't be thrown away. But anyway, long story short, um, this is a rigid plastic material. It'll be a great bulkhead type material. So this is super heavy. So I'll buy something called Starboard, which is a little lighter, better for marine purposes. And I'll build a bulkhead that will be the shape of the back of that canoe. So I'll get the Starboard. I'll 
figure out where exactly I want to cut this thing off and trim it out, probably with cardboard first to figure out the shape. And I'll get my, my starboard and I'll mount it in there and attach it probably with I don't know, 30 screws to make sure it's real solid and I'll have a solid bulkhead to build my propulsion system from. So coming back over here to the work bench, I'm gonna take this motor, this shaft, and plop it in, right? So there's something kind of interesting over here, which I am personally proud of. I don't think it's like an invention or any kind of uh, you know, noble inspiration, but I think it's pretty neat. So a typical motor is mounted in a very rigid sort of way. You've got your motor bolted down, you've got your prop shaft coming through a fiberglass tube, everything's solid. Like the only thing that's moving is your propeller, the shaft, now obviously the engine has all kinds of things moving. But what I was thinking was, what if, just for the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna just take this propeller shaft off the motor, make it easier for me. This weighs about 100 pounds. What if I mounted, bear with me here, it's kind of, kind of silly. What if in the back of that um, piece of starboard or that bulkhead, I actually put in a flexible membrane like a piece of thick rubber, and then I could steer through the back of that boat. So I have this in a clamp right now. So I could steer up and down, which obviously you don't need to do unless you're trimming out the boat, but I could actually push the motor one way and steer, push the motor the other way and steer the other way. So it's a pretty simple concept, just a flexible um, transom. But I'm really proud of my ability to go to Home Depot, my personal favorite hardware store. Not sponsored, just personal favorite. Um, there's no story there. Went to Home Depot, spent, I don't know, $8, $9. Bought a couple plumbing fittings. We'll pull this apart here. So this first piece is a inch and a half Fernco cap. So ordinarily it wouldn't have a hole in it, but I drilled a three quarter inch hole through it. So that cap comes back and that's what's sealing the prop shaft to this little through wall fitting. And this guy here is a inch and a half by three quarter bushing or reducer, whatever you want to call it, it's the same thing. So it adapts from that firm code down to the shaft size um, from the motor. And then inside of here, so on the side, you can see there's a plastic piece, you have your flexible membrane, another plastic piece, and then your Fernco. Inside of that is a three quarter inch close steel pipe nipple, which allows me to thread, because there's threads on the three quarter side of this white PVC, allows me to thread this one into the other one. So I tighten this in a vise, I tighten the snot out of it. So if I put some silicone grease or silicone or any other um, RTV sealant, this would be a waterproof seal. So I think that's pretty cool. So then you just slap on your Fernco caps to both sides, get your 5 16 nut driver or flat screwdriver on there, tighten that sucker up. And actually before you do that, you would pack this full of silicone grease or or something else, whatever you want. You pack that thing full, tighten this up, and then you have a watertight through wall fitting for a boat. So if you wanna back up for a second, you know, kind of go back to the full picture here. What I just described, for about $10, you can put a propeller shaft through anything. I could put it through this block wall of my garage, put it through a canoe, I could put it through the back of a John boat, or a fiberglass boat. For about $10, I could have a watertight shaft. Conventionally, you have something called like a, like a dripless adapter or something like that. It's basically like a, uh, uh, what do they call it? Like a, like a packing nut, like on your, like on your spigot where you have a water hose on the outside of your house. Got that little nut, maybe you have a drip. And it's like, all right, well, the faucet's dripping. Oh no, got this big plumbing emergency. No, you actually don't. Maybe you do, but usually you don't. 
you get your crescent wrench out and you tighten that nut and it actually pulls the nut down the threads just ever so much to pull in on the flexible packing that's inside which then tightens onto the shaft which in the garden hose case is that little knobby turn the shaft going in it sucks everything tight to the shaft so for me i had made the exact same thing for ten dollars or you can go online and buy a volvo dripless adapter or whatever other super expensive marine product is out there so i was pretty excited to make this and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make that square stern canoe, use this sort of fitting to go through the wall. I may or may not use a flexible membrane, we'll, we'll figure that out. But I'm gonna take this motor and this shaft right now and sort of show you what my idea is for it to come out the back of the canoe. So it's got a little bit of weight to it, it's not too bad. We'll uh, just fish this through here. Let me just lay this down. So, like I said before, this would absolutely pain me if it was a, a $1,500 old down canoe, which it is. This one's just damaged, so I'll fix it. So your engine's going to sit about there, or more likely about where this, this seat is. I'll end up deinstalling this and moving it forward. So I'll sit up and kind of balance the weight. But basically, I'm going to take that engine and this propeller shaft and stick it out. I don't know if you can see that, but the shaft will actually come out the back side, the stern of the canoe, and provide the propulsion. But uh, for me, that's not quite enough. So where I fish typically, where I fished growing up, it's a little different fishing now. I have two kids, so uh, my time is different. But growing up, I fished a lot in the James River, which I've mentioned in previous videos. There's a lot of rocks, and most of the places that you actually want to fish are littered with rocks. Some are round, some are jagged, whatever. But it's gonna be pretty hard to take this canoe with this prop shaft dangling out the back. I mean, not that extreme, but probably about right there. It's gonna be pretty hard to take this canoe down the James River without a rock hitting the propeller, you know, again, and it's going to eventually pop off. But, you know, it could rip the transom out, it could, it could break the boat, hard to tell. So what I'm thinking, which maybe is not really a novel idea, I think they're used on some high-end sailing yachts, is a retractable kind of design, where the propeller could be in the water and then actually come up inside of the boat to stay protected. Um, then I had another idea where on the back of that uh, bulkhead or square stern have some sort of fitting. This is just a four inch um, pipe flange. But I can bolt that thing to the back of the transom, cut it out, and then you know, these things aren't exactly the right size, but basically the propeller could come back up inside and it would continue to go all the way inside the canoe and be housed. Forgive me for the discoordinated pepper here. It would actually come up inside of a tube inside of the canoe. So all of this would be mounted down in there. And basically when you want a propeller, you would advance it down into the water and when you don't want a propeller, you would pull it on back. And that could be easily accomplished with you know, many things. I try to make things with commonly available parts. So what I have here is a, an old drawer slide out of, a, out of a kitchen from somebody I used to know. Um, they threw it all away and I decided to salvage it. But basically you could mount this engine on this drawer slide where I'm holding it up here just for demonstration. But you mount your engine on this right here, and when you want your propeller, you just drive it on into the water. When you're done with it, you just pull it on back up. And I have little locking features and things of that nature to hold everything in place. So, there's a lot of talking, but uh, basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take this absolute junker of a canoe, I'm trying to fix it, I'm gonna cut the end off, 
completely normal. I'm just gonna chop the end off. Make a new bulkhead, rig up some kind of way for my propeller to go into the water and some kind of way for that propeller to be out of the water. Whether that's by me pulling it or if a rock hits it, it comes back in or something. Hard to tell at this point, but uh, I'm gonna continue on the saga of a powered canoe because at the end of the day, fishing is fun, canoeing is fun, but you hit that long stretch of flat water and you just wish you had a motor. So this is gonna be a small form factor propelled canoe that'll take you through those boring stretches of, of mud flats or sand where there's not a small mouth to be found. And you can just burn on past that and get to the rocky parts where all the Somalis are at. So I hope you enjoy it. And there'll be many more videos of, of me actually doing this build, repairing the canoe, and I uh, hope you've enjoyed this one and keep on coming back for more. Don't forget to like and subscribe and keep coming back to Green Lizard USA.